till I have seen the last of my sons and daughters down here. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Litany of St. Padre Pio of Piltrasina. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy, Christ hear us. Christ hear us. God the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Holy Mary, Virgin Immaculate. Saint Pio of Piotrasina, pray for us. Beloved of God, pray for us. Imitator of Jesus Christ, pray for us. Good Shepherd of the people, pray for us. Model of priests, pray for us. Light of the Church, pray for us. Adorer of the Blessed Sacrament, pray for us. Faithful Son of Saint Francis, pray for us. Mark for the stigmata of Jesus. Pray for us. Patient in suffering. Pray for us. Helper of the dying. Pray for us. Director of souls. Pray for us. Heart of gold. Pray for us. Apostle of mercy. Pray for us. Worker of miracles. Pray for us. Consoler of the afflicted. Pray for us. Lover of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Helper of souls in doubt and darkness, pray for us. Comforter of the sick, pray for us. Example of humility, pray for us. Source of wisdom, pray for us. Mirror of the divine life, pray for us. Lover of Jesus crucified, pray for us. Resigned to the will of God, pray for us. Doing good upon earth, pray for us. Filled with the spirit of self-sacrifice, pray for us. Our help and hope in all our needs, pray for us. Vessel of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. Leading us to Christ, pray for us. Our spiritual Father and Advocate, pray for us. Crowned in glory, crowned with glory in heaven, pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God. Take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Concluding prayer. Almighty and eternal God, by, by a singular grace, you allowed your priest, Saint Pio of Pietrasina, to participate in the mystery of the cross of your Son. And through his ministry, you reveal the marvels of your mercy. Grant that through his intercession, we may remain one with Christ in his passion, so as to joyfully obtain the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
you are new to the parish, we invite you to register at the parish office or on the website. Before we begin Mass, may we request that everyone to please silence your mobile phones and prepare ourselves for the sacred celebration. Let us include in our prayers at this Mass the following intentions. For the repose of the soul of Geraldine Sakula and all souls in purgatory. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our presider today is Father Tom Rivera with Deacon Rogelio Soto, and our homilist is Brother Jose Maria Vera. Today's reading can be found in Let Us Celebrate Booklet on page 103. Please all rise and let us sing the entrance song. Be with you. Our 
Our scripture today will speak about some of the temptations we have to go inward just for ourselves. Uh, we pause now and ask that the Lord may uh, be invited into our life to show us the way to live in Christ. Lord Jesus, you know you perfect. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you the greatest transport in Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ. Yes. Lord Jesus, you are the Nazareth true. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
lift us up God's way. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say that I shall suffer the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our wounds, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our community. <coughs> Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his cause. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Yes. <laughs> St. James. Beloved, for 
your jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy and insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts come among you? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You feel and envy but you cannot obtain to fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive. Because you ask wrongly, you spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord.
in Padre Pio's parish. What I would like to do in this reflection is first I'm going to share with you a Franciscan story and I will connect that story to the Gospel reading and then after that I will connect all of that to the life of St. Padre Pio in light of his feast day coming up uh, tomorrow. Some time ago, um, a Capuchin brother of mine in the city of Assisi, Italy, wrote a story while meditating on this gospel reading. The story is a bit long, um, however, I will share with you the short version of it because I don't want this reflection to turn into penance. And so, I'll share with you and I'll connect it to the gospel reading. The story goes like this. Once upon a time, a small tree dreamed of becoming the tallest and the strongest tree on the hill. Believing that this will bring it fame and power. The other trees, however, questioned its ambition. But the small tree remained determined. After many, many years, he finally grew into the biggest and the strongest tree on the hill. One day a group of farmers spotted the tree and decided to cut it down for firewood. The tree, now reduced to a pile of wood, was left forgotten in the darkness of a farm. Filled with sorrow, the tree lamented its fate, wishing to be consumed by fire as he felt he had lost all purpose. Shortly after, a Roman soldier entered the farm and noticed a tree. Now the tree was reduced to wood. The soldier took the wood and fashioned it into a cross. Confused, the tree wondered what role it will now play. One day, the tree found itself being carried through the streets by a man who was mocked beaten and spit it on. The tree didn't understand what was happening until it reached a hill called Calvary. The man was then nailed to the tree. When the man died, the tree realized that this man was none other than Christ, the long-awaited Messiah. At that very moment, the tree heard a voice saying, You see, little tree, you always wanted to be the strongest and the most famous tree among others. But true strength lies only on those who are fully united with me. After, apart from me, you are nothing more than wood. But united with me, your purpose is fulfilled, and you will now be remembered forever. The tree, which had once sought power for itself, had now become had now become the most venerated tree in history. The tree that we now know as the Holy the Holy Cross, a tree that stands as a symbol of the sacrifice and the salvation brought to all humankind through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, well, this is just a pious Franciscan story. We are invited to remember that when Jesus embraced the cross, he not only embraced the humiliation and the suffering of such painful death, but more importantly, we are invited to remember that the most powerful invitation for us is to remember that Christ embraced all humankind, all of creation through this pure sacrifice. Theologians call this a complete surrender 
which led the Son of God to crucifixion, something that they describe as kenosis, a great word that describes a total self-giving of the Son of God to the point of accepting death. Death on a cross on a, as a true and pure sacrifice. Through his life, Jesus shows us that our vocation as his followers is not to be the strongest nor the most famous among others, but rather, through his life, he reveals that our true vocation is to serve and to love others. This is why in the Gospel, Mark tells us that Jesus began to ask his disciples, what were you arguing on the way? They remained silent because they knew that they were arguing among themselves about who was the greatest. But Jesus told them, if anyone wishes to be the first, he shall be the last of all, the servant of all. My brothers and sisters, this is what our true vocation is all about. This is our calling as Christians, to have a spirit based on charity, ready to serve others, willing to help others, eager to love others. We can never learn to be good Christians without first learning the meaning of our Christian vocation. Here, I will transition into the life of St. Patrick Pio, because I believe that Patrick Pio understood this from a very, very young age, as early as five years old. His Christian vocation was, above all, to love and to help others, even as a five-year-old boy. On an occasion, Maria Giuseppa de Fortione, mother of St. Patrick Pio, described that when her son was only five years old, she was looking for her little son Francesco, that is the real name of Patrick Pio. She searched for little Francesco all over the house, but couldn't find them until she found them sleeping under the bed, using a stone as a pillow. Maria asked little Francesco, what are you doing under the bed? And why are you using a stone as a pillow? The little boy responded, forgive me, mama. Don't be mad at me. I did it as a penance for the conversion of the children who make fun of me at school. Now the spirit of Holy Charity followed this holy man throughout his life until the very end of his life. Padre Pio wore the stigma for 50 years because in one of his prayers he asked Christ to allow him to join in his sacrifice on the cross for the conversion of souls. On September 20th of the year 1918, Padre Pio finally received the sacred wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ. He described this event as a following, quote, I was in the choir after Mass, and I felt as if I were being pierced with a sharp weapon in the hands, feet, and side. The pain was so intense that I fell to the floor and thought I would die. The wounds bled constantly, which caused me much physical suffering, but there was also a spiritual joy because I was finally sharing the sufferings of Christ. <coughs> In this way, my brothers and sisters, St. Padre Pio, like many, many other saints, shows us that our true vocation, our vocation that we are called as Christians, is a vocation of charity, of service, of love to others. Now, these services can take many forms in each of us. The virtue of charity may call us in different ways. But all of these different ways come from the same Word of God, the eternal Logos. 
that tells us that if anyone wishes to be first, if anyone wishes to transcend years, decades, centuries, languages, nations, he or she shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Yesterday I was talking to Father Andre and we were conversing about the need of vocations in the Catholic Church for the priesthood, for our religious life. And we concluded that the lack of vocations today is because we as Christians are forgetting about our true vocation and that is to serve, to lay down your life for others. This is why we don't have patience because we are forgetting to lay down our lives for what really and truly matters, the kingdom of God. And we might say, well, I'm too old to become a religious brother. Or I'm too old to become a sister. I'm married. What can I do? Well, have you ever thought about consecrating your children to God? Maria, the mother of Patrick Peel, when he was born, she consecrated her son to St. Francis of Assisi and said to him, This is my child. Do with him as you wish. Well, it's no surprise why Padre Pio turned out to be the man he was. How many of us are willing to give our children to God so that our children can become a Padre Pio, so that our children can become a Mother Teresa? Our vocation, my brothers and sisters, is to lay down our lives for the kingdom of God to love others, to pray for others, to lead for others, so that our lives too may transcend in the way that the life of Padre Pio has transcended in these. So through the intercession of Padre Pio and all of the saints, May we too receive the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to be humble of heart so as to learn to love and to serve others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our sponsors Lord hear our prayer for the leaders of the, of the parish church whose humble self the wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For nations torn apart by war, civil unrest, to seek peaceful alternative to violence. Let us pray to the Lord. For judges, advocates, and civil servants whose humble the right of the of the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. For young people who is hunger and thirsty for justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For the members of this assembly who find joy in, in God's commandment and peace in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. And the very special intention for this mess, all the souls in the purgatory, here are the dignity statula, and all the parishioners. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord continue to sustain us in your favor, love, and wisdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we will have a second collection after communion that can help support our seminary programs uh, throughout the whole formation of uh, preparing uh, and for our uh, services priests. That will be after the second collection after communion today. Thank you for your generosity in that collection. He's ready to sing again number 726. Make me a channel of your peace, number 726. Almighty and eternal. 
of God. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of the angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Blessed Apostles, 
I reveal Hillary and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages. We may bear it to be co heir to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father.
Union is only 733 years. There are many parts of the 733 years.
graciously raise up all Lord those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The announcements uh, we continue to uh, be grateful for the Father Eliot Lentilla's many years here uh, serving as pastor. He's now retired. Uh, Cardinal Sukic has uh, now appointed Father uh, Andre, Father Andre Calfran, our own father, uh, uh, Andre, as our parish administrator. He will uh, continue to be administrator until the Cardinal appoints a, a pastor. So we welcome him and ask the Lord's support for him and, and that role that he takes on. We will uh, celebrate the feast day of St. Padre Pio uh, tomorrow, September 23rd, with a trilingual mass at 7 in the evening. Bishop uh, Bartosek will be the main celebrant at that mass. You're welcome to come tomorrow evening at 7. All are welcome to join the celebration of the feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz de Manila. First Filipino saint on this coming Saturday, September 28th, in conjunction with the 5 p.m. Mass. Filipino will begin at 4 p.m. prior to the Mass. Also, our Bible study group will begin on Tuesday, October 1st, on Zoom. You can read more about how to sign up for that uh, new Bible study, which will be on the Eucharist. Uh, in the bulletin, there's information there for that. Again, uh, I think that we're all very grateful for all the volunteers who helped uh, in helping with our cabinas. And yesterday, with the fiesta that we had, uh, we can all be very grateful for uh, the uh, generosity of those individuals who made that possible. So thank you. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us be said that the Lord be glorified the Lord for His love. Thank you, Father God.